I'm going to show you how to cut on your Glowforge without the crumb tray in the bottom of it. This is a hanger that I found at Ikea and I thought it would be cute as one of those hangers that says bride and their name and wedding date or whatever they want on it. So for this project you'll need um, digital calipers and if you don't have some I ordered mine off of Amazon. The crumb tray in the Glowforge will only allow you to cut on objects that are about half an inch or less. And this right here, using my calipers, is almost at 0.5 inches. So um, to make this video, I decided just to go ahead and remove the crumb tray and show you how to do that. If you want to read on the Glowforge community group once you get your Glowforge, the math behind all of this so that you understand why things are the way they are, feel free to do so, but to cut to the chase, I'm going to tell you how to do it in this video. With your digital calipers, you want to zero it at around 1.38 inches. And I can never get it quite on there all the way, but it's at 1.3805 right now. That's pretty close. So once I have it reading at that measurement, I'm going to hit the zero button. So it zeroes it out with the clamp open this wide. Now you want to measure your material and the material that you're going to have it on in the Glowforge. Without a crumb tray, your material thickness has to measure, after zeroing it, between 0.1 and 0.5 inches. So I measured my hanger plus my two project boards and found that it was still at 0 0.07. So I'm also going to have to add a piece of proof grade draft board um, to make it just a little bit thicker so we can get over that 0.1 mark. So I just measured all of this material together and the thickness was 0 0.208. So that's the number we're going to need to tell our Glowforge once we get to that part in the app. This is what the Glowforge looks like without the crumb tray in it. It has this metal on the bottom and also this front door opens up when you need to remove the crumb tray to help slide out easier. And this is what it looks like with the crumb tray in. And then you would close the front door all the way and close the lid of your Glowforge to be ready to use the crumb tray. But for this project, I'm gonna take the crumb tray back out again. Here is my base material in my hanger inside the Glowforge. And this is a piece of wood I got from craftdeals.com. And I am going to use it for a project eventually, but right now I really enjoyed having it as the bottom piece when I removed the crumb tray because it does have these lines in it. And it helps me to get everything lined up perfectly. So I'm just going to put the bottom edge of this hanger along that line. And now I'm going to shut the front door, making sure that both sides snap in place. And now I can lower the lid of my Glowforge. You want to try to make sure that your item is centered under the camera that's on top of your Glowforge. That will help you to align it better when using the Glowforge app. I'm going to use Silhouette Studio to write the word bride to put on the hanger. And luckily I've already thought about which font I want to use because if you're like me, this could be an all day affair. But I really like a font called Starfish. And you always want to remember to weld your fonts or else they're going to not look right once they're engraved. So right click and hit weld. And also because the dot is separate and the B is separate, I'm going to right click and hit group. Now just so the Glowforge recognizes this all as one piece, I'm going to assign it a color. Let's go 
go with purple. And if I had measured my hanger, I could go ahead and resize this and it will stay that size once it goes to Glowforge. Um, but I didn't, so I'm just gonna do that once I get to the Glowforge app. But first we want to hit File, Save As, I saved one of these earlier, but you want to make sure your format is SVG. And I'm going to replace the one that I created. In the Glowforge app, now I've already uploaded this uh, bride file, but I'll show you how to do that. You can click upload and select wherever you saved your file to and then click open. So since I already have it loaded, I can just click open and it will send it to my design area. And here you can see what it looks like um, with the hanger and my backing materials inside of my Glowforge. So I'm going to resize this bride to center it on my hanger here. Zoom in so I can see better just a little bit okay that looks centered enough for tonight's project um, I'm going to use the medium draft board proofread uh, pre settings even though that's not what's in there the only difference we have to do is to click on bride over here in your left panel and make sure it's set to engrave and i am going to use the sd graphic setting but if you click that arrow it will bring you into the settings panel here and instead of telling them that it's 0.125 inches this is where i want to use my reading from the calipers and my reading was 0.207 so I'll put that right there and hit enter and that will save it for me. Okay, now I am ready to hit print and send it to my Glowforge. Um, I thought about holding this hanger down, maybe taping it to the board or something, but I'm just going to see if it stays in place the way it is. So we'll hit print here and see how long it's going to take. Okay, so about four minutes. I'll hit print here and head over to the Glowforge to get it started. Hit the magic button. And I'm going to speed the video up here to about four times the actual speed just so that we can get through the graving a little bit faster. So you can see the Glowforge goes back and forth, basically line by line from the bottom to the top to create the engraving. And on this project, you can see that I have um, some charring marks around my letters at the bottom. So that's something to consider on wood projects or other materials that you may not want to have that burnt wood look. So I got back to my work area and I saw that I had a bottle of rubbing alcohol here and I decided to try to clean up that um, charred area on my hanger using a dab of rubbing alcohol just on a paper towel. 
and the results are that it completely removed all of the charring around the word. It looks incredible now and that was just a very simple solution. So bonus tip there, um, save your time and your money on the masking and just use a dab of rubbing alcohol. It was easy. I I just swiped it once and it came off. Um, so this is actually a very nice deep engrave. See if you can see at an angle how deep that is. I think it turned out very beautifully and with it cleaned up now this has turned into an awesome project. So I hope that you liked this tutorial and if you did please subscribe and I'll continue to make more videos. Thanks for watching.